Hey folks, before I show the next video, which is about Bottisham Place that I was mentioning on the previous video, where Zara and I visited and we had a great experience where a lady called Mrs. Paul, the Paul family bought the Bottisham Place off the hassles further back in time. Um, and this old lady provided us with coffee and told us some history of Bottisham. She showed us maps and books and photos and most of all allowed us to visit the bedroom with the Tudor panelling which had been placed by our ancestor John Hassel when he built the house in the 1500s. The Hassels lived here for several hundred years and had connections with royalty, Cambridge University and owned much land. These group of Hassels are the ancestors, ancestors of Sir Edward Hassel High Sheriff of Cumberland, knighted by King William III and steward to Lady Anne Clifford of Broham Castle near Penrith, which by the way I have also visited. I've got photos and videos and audio that I did, I think it was audio, with pictures of my visit to Lady Anne Clifford's castle. So I have a wealth of experience on audio and on video, which not everyone can actually see. They're not actually in a position to share this stuff at the moment. I think it's all being taken over by someone else and it's all being gently allowed. I'm just being allowed now myself to see and hear my own stuff on the audio. Even though I've got my original cassettes, I've got my original hand playing cassette player and I've transferred a lot onto disc already. I've created videos using audio and photos and been back later doing proper video recordings. Anyway, I'm going to try and play this next video. I don't know what it's going to be about but it was probably in 2006 and it could be something to do with me and Zara visiting Bottisham Place. Here we go. This tape was done in um, 2006 and it's when we first moved to Suffolk from Somerset and we're beginning to explore the local villages surrounding where we lived in Little Well Neatham near Bury St Edmunds and the start of this tape recording is our visit to Bottisham Place where we were given access to go in the house and see the Tudor panelling of um, John Hassel and his wife Agnes. John of course built Bottisham Place back in the 1560s I think or he added to it. it might, there might have been a, uh, um, a place there before. So anyway this is just a bit of a tape to do with our visit to Bottisham Place that day. That's me, Zara, and um, the little dog, Brandy. Right, it's the 26th of April, 2006. Zara and me and Brandy and Louis are now living in Suffolk, a place called Lower Green, Little Well, well Neatham, near Bury St Edmunds. We've been here a couple of weeks now, and we started to explore the countryside. <clears throat> Today was quite significant because we went to Bottisham, the ancestral home of the Hassels. We went to look around the church and we also went to Bottisham Place, which is one of the oldest um, buildings in Bottisham itself um, and is the ancient home of the Hassels, who built it in 1564. Anyway, by chance, <coughs> we happened to meet the great nephew of a lady who's recently inherited the place. She's lived there a long time, of course, called Betty Paul. She's 83 years old. She was born in 1923. Um, she's um, sort of wheelchair bound and uses an electric buggy to get around in. Anyway, this was quite an event for us because we went into this historic building which really felt like it was 500 years old with wobbly walls and uneven 
ceilings and floors and everything and it was all oldy worldy and smell had that musky smell about it. Anyway, she was more pleased to let us come in and we were allowed to have a look round. And upstairs we went into a bedroom up there where it's got the old panelling. This old wooden panelling against the walls. Um, with the figures of John Hassel and his wife Agnes. You know, these are very, very old, you know, sort of 500 years old. And we take some photographs of these as well. Um, very, very precious um, figures of, of these relatives of ours. Anyway, the, Betty Paul and her family have lived in the house quite a long time. And they, their, their family history and heritage also goes back quite a long way as well. And I have written some things down in my little book. I can find my little book. Um, opposite Bossishman Place, there's an old pub, which is just now used for a Xerox document network. But it was... Um, a very old pub, formerly the White Swan Inn, which was frequented by Dick Turpin, the highwayman, um, who was eventually, you know, executed up in York, apparently, but he used to hang out in this old pub. It's a shame it's been changed into a business place, but that's what happens now. Um, anyway, I think it was her cousin, Paul, who wrote, um, the, no, her, no well, not her cousin Paul, a, a cousin of hers, of the Paul family, wrote um, Paul and, Ki and Kindred, which is a book, but, and they've got the only copy, they haven't had it published or anything, which uh, looks at the history of that family. Um, so, you know, that, that would be quite interesting because they've lived in Bottisham for many hundreds of years as well. Uh, Betty also had a brother, Dennis, who died not long ago, and she's inherited Bottisham Place. Um, we met her great nephew and everything. But it was really an exciting visit, you know, quite an important visit for us to be able to be allowed to go into this old farmhouse because um, the Hassels were one of the wealthiest families in Bottisham and in that area at the time, who of course uh, are still up in uh, Cumberland. Um, so it was quite an, a good time for us, and we were able to take some photos. We took some photos only once, that was of the, the panel with the figures on. But we took lots of photographs outside as well. Um, the... Betty herself was um, an interesting person. She didn't really tell us a great deal about the history or anything, but a little bit about, you know, some of the changes to the building over the years, but um, it hadn't changed a great deal, and it still looked very oldie-worldy and everything. Um, <clears throat> we had a cup of coffee there. She invited us to stay for coffee, and we sat in the kitchen with, I think, somebody who might care for her. I'm not sure who, who that lady was. Um, but we had a general chat. She showed us some photographs. Her brother Dennis had been in the war and there was lots of photos of ships that had been, were being blown up. You know, this was actually in action, I should imagine. He'd been in the Navy. Um, <coughs> we also had a look at some great big old maps which are rolled up of of the hundreds, the hundreds were sort of areas divided up around Cambridge and Suffolk. Um, very old parchment going back hundreds of years as well. Um, so basically, you know, we had a quick look at that. Um, and, you know, she had lots of old books as well, full of history. Um, but we got the impression she was into burning things. She did mention that she was having a tidy up and she just burns things. So, you know, it, it's a shame if she does because there's a lot of stuff there that family history societies or even ourselves would like to, to look, look at. Um, but she had what was called a dove house in the past as well, which 
would be a listed building now because it, apparently it was an old Saxon building originally and they pulled that down because they said it was unsafe it wouldn't it would be strengthened in this day and age and other old um, cottages thatched cottages that they've got in other areas that they were quite willing to pull down so you know they're not sort of that uh, attached to things um just had to connect up the battery, folks. Got the battery charger on, starting up again. Here we go. So, no, she was she had a, a little bit of spark in her, but obviously, you know, restricted because of her disabilities. Um, but it was a very interesting time. Following that, we went on to a place called Fallburn. I don't know a great deal about that, but we did find several graves of people that were probably related to us, but we're going to go back to Fullburn, um, to the church there. And again, a few technical hitches with batteries, getting the charger to work properly. I'll just try and start the audio again. We were talking about um, being at Fullburn. So we went off to Fullburn after Bottisham, where I've got a feeling there's a lot of masons. Fallburn. We found um, lots of masons there. Lots who had died in 1866 and thereabouts. There must have been some sort of um, infectious disease going on at the time. There were flax and plums and clements and haws as well. Um, I say lots of masons there, which is interesting. Which I should look up on the um, Ancestry Com to see if we've got any links with them. Of course, we're still waiting to find out about James Mason, really, because um, until we know about him, we don't, re we can't really link ourselves to these others yet. So, um, you know, that's a little bit, we've got to dig around for the Masons, that just encourages us to do that. And then we just stopped at a little pub, I think that's called the White Heart, I think, it's just a, basically, have a drink and refresh ourselves, but we're both all tired. And then we made our way back to um, Little Welthenium, where we, you know, Louis had been waiting all day for us. So we're out and about now doing our field work. I have got another type of tape recorder, it's um, one that you plug in to the computer, but I'm having, I've got to sort that out yet, so I was going to look into that so we can. I wasn't able to record on it because I did, somehow it hadn't unloaded the previous stuff, so we need to sort that out. Anyway, we're doing quite well in our little bungalow here. We've got lovely gardens, lovely walks, and it's quite peaceful here. Even though we're renting it, it's not exactly ours, but we're trying to make it our home as best we can. Um, going back to Bottisham, we did find some Isaacsons recent ones really, people that died in 1988 and um, 1960s, that sort of thing, in the 50s. But they could be related to Isaacsons. Once again, the Isaacsons were still trying to find a link with Anne Isaacson, who married James Mason and had Elizabeth Mason, who eventually married Thomas Brooks. So with Masons and Isaacsons, we still need to get on top of those. But we did find... Um, Woolards as well, and Isons in Bottisham, where the Hassles are supposed to also be placed, or some of their gravestones actually in the entrance way, but we couldn't actually get in the main entrance, although I did go in the church, and there's a lot of Roger Jennings, I don't know if you pronounce it, J-E-N-Y-N-S, who is Lord of the Manor, and a connoisseur of Far Eastern art. Um, he's one of the many Jennings who had their own plot in a separate cemetery uh, up, up the road a bit from the, the church. They were quite important people in that village. We also came across some flax, because somewhere we've got flax that we're related to. Um, there was a Bottisham National Church. Right, that's the end of that tape. Don't forget, there are only 11 minutes 
11 to 12 minutes in length so that will carry on somewhere else um, obviously on the cassette recorder I've got the they continue they continue and if I've recorded this particular cassette on a disc it will continue but at the moment I'm taking these snippets off Ancestry before they disappear because um, they could do I really want to try and get the ones I know I haven't captured yet but there's loads there's over a hundred and I, I will need to reorganize it all once I've done that as well so this is Sheila in 2022 and since that time since that time um, I, I have gained a wealth of stuff do you know what I mean? A wealth of information and um, there's just so much stuff it's unbelievable really look at all these it's loads of stuff. Right, over and out. Gotta have me breakfast. <laughs>